Walt Disney presents... From Frontierland, The Nine Lives of El Fago Baca. El Fago Baca, the man who couldn't be killed. bullets. That's a lot of lead, isn't it? The man whose story you're about to see actually held off a lynch mob of 80 cowboys who fired 4,000 rounds like this into the flimsy shack where he was hiding. He came out of it without a scratch. And miraculously so did the statue of Santa Ana that shared the siege with him. His name was El Fago Baca, in the land of big men when this great west was wild. El Fago was small and his nature was mild. And the legend was that, like El Gato the cat, nine lives had El Fago, El Gato. He dared to stand up to the toughest of men. He faced all their six guns again and again. All the people in town and the folks all around sing the praise of El Fago, El Gato. El Fago was wise and El Fago was strong. El Fago, El Gato, who made right from wrong. And the legend was that, like El Gato the cat, Nine lives at El Fago Baca. El Fago Baca, light-hearted adventurer and lightning-fast gunfighter, but always on the side of justice. The Mexican-Americans whose rights he always defended called him the man who could not be killed. This is the first of several adventures titled The Nine Lives of El Fago Baca. Nine lives had El Fago Baca. Nine lives had El Fago Baca. Yeah. El Fago, get off the street! Is that you, Sangano? Of course it is me. Hurry! What's going on, Capaldi? Come inside, and I will tell you. Who's doing all the shooting? Where is everybody? I'm glad to kill somebody. That rainbow has been riding back and forth all morning, shooting at anyone who shows himself. Where's the justice of the peace? Behind the counter. Afraid to arrest that drunk, Senor West? Certainly not. But if I do, all of his friends will come here to aid him, and then great harm will befall our community. Well, if we do not stop them, they will do worse. You do not understand, El Fago. If we get in their way, they will shoot us down. We are Americans, same as they are. Look, Mano, if we do not stand up to them, they will think we are cowards. Let me your badge, and I will arrest this man before he hurts someone. Oh, he's not permissible. You are not a deputy. I am now. I, El Fago Baca, citizen of Socorro, New Mexico. Do solemnly swear to uphold the law. <laughs> Good morning, sir. Who are you? I'm a special deputy. Please give me your guns. They've arrested Mac. Go inside and get the rest of the outfit. Come on, boys. The boss wants you. All right, Your Honor. You can hold court right now. Mm -hmm. But I do not wish to hear the case. It will only cause us more trouble. Well, if the local court does not wish to see justice done, I guess I'll have to take the prisoners to Socorro. There, Seco, por Dios. Somebody has to teach him better manners. Cuidado! <laughs> Don't go out there, they're you. What's going on?
going on here? Nothing much. I just arrested this man for endangering life and property. You made a mistake. He's won our outfit. Turn him loose. I'm sorry. I cannot do that. He's got to stand trial. You let him go right now. Or we'll take him away from you. Well, I'm going to give you the time it takes me to count three to clear out of here. One, two, three. Forgive me for bothering you again, Your Honor. But it's a little late to ride all the way to Socorro. So I think we'd better hold court right here. Too crowded to get in, but we'll wait. We heard there was serious trouble. There is. Some hombre shot our foreman and wounded another man. But he's not going to get away with it. That right, boys? Oh, no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. How'd this happen? Who is he? I don't know. But he had the nerve to arrest one of our boys, McCarty. And all he was trying to do is have a little fun. Well, it's all over but the shooting. What's the verdict? Drunk and disorderly, $5 fine. <laughs> <laughs> all right, boys, you can laugh. But that poor cat's going to be mighty sorry he'd done that. Coming out now. Where do you think you're going? I'm here on business, gentlemen. Please let me through. We've got a little business of our own to take care of. Don't we, boys? Yeah. Hold on now. Give him a chance. I wouldn't try it. I have 12 shots here. I can hit at least four of you before you get me. I'll get him. but I must take shelter here. Go quickly before they start shooting at me. Let's get that dirty skunk out of there. Yeah, come on. Come on, Al, there, you. Go get it. I'm coming in after you. Give me, Senora Santana, for what I'm about to do. do against so many? Anita, they are wrecking your home. No importa, uncle. The poor man has to hide somewhere. Los Beko has friends in Socorro. American friends. If someone will lend me a horse, I will go for help. Take mine. But you will never be back in time. How 
can anyone be alive in there? Those walls are only mud and stakes, and you've thrown slugs in every inch of them. We're bound to get him soon. That's what you've been saying all day long. Why don't you let him surrender? Fat chance. It's getting dark enough to rush him. Pete, pass the word. We're going to close in from all sides. Senor West, do you think Zangano has reached the Coro yet? I'm afraid not. It is over 125 miles away. Come, Anita, you and the boys can move in with us tonight. Gracias, uncle. Will you feed them? I will stay here tonight. Yeah. Go with your uncle. Be good, boys. He has no chance now. They are going to come at him from all sides. You won't try that again. Beats me how I can cover all four sides. It ain't natural. Where's he hiding? Concentrate on them posts in the middle. They're about chewed through. Santana, we are both still alive. And if God wills it, we will stay that way. If not... sign of Gillis yet. No sign of nothing. I think that varmint's dead. Well, we'll find out if that dynamite ever gets here. What's taking him so long? Come on, the camp's closed. It's after midnight. A couple of boys got another idea. Yes. The back of the corral some pine branches. Gonna burn him out. That sounds like a good idea. All right, we'll cover them when they go in. <laughs> Looks like he's still alive. Oh, that roof ain't gonna burn. It's covered with sod. Here's the dynamite. Won't be long now. Give me that cigar. Now, when I light this, start shooting. But don't hit me. I'm going to run in from the side and throw it right to the window. You ready? All right, start shooting. Oh, shut up. Pete, 
Come on, Tom, see if we get some more ammunition. Did you hear me? I said we're about out of shells. We'll get going. <laughs> Anita, your aunt is worried about you, staying up all night. He's still alive, uncle. I know. They are forcing the judge to go out to induce him to surrender. I do not trust them. Just tell him there won't be no more shooting if he comes out peaceful. And tell him in Spanish. But, senores, El Fago Baca speaks English as well as you. Mejor. Look, do what we tell you, pronto. Move! Signal Jeff to start sneaking up now. I protest what you're doing. It's underhanded. Are you siding with him? I don't aim to be a part of this. You're just a lynch mob. Law may be on his side. Well, now we know where you stand, Mr. Kimball, and we won't forget it, neither. Senor Baca. Por favor, no me mates. Soy senor juez. What are you supposed to tell me? They want me to advise you to surrender. They say they promise they will stop shooting. What are they up to now? I do not know, but I suspect some treachery. Your friend Zangano went to Socorro yesterday to bring help. Do you think you can stay alive a little longer? Well, I shall certainly try. Mil gracias, Senor Wes. Tell them I appreciate their offer, but I am quite comfortable here. Sorry, senores, but he said he won't come out. All right. All right. If these two mule to take advantage of our offer, let him suffer the consequences. Con permiso. What's so funny now? Look. I'll be. Now he's fixing to have himself breakfast. Deputy from Socorro. I'm here in response to a message from Alfie Gabaka. Is he still alive? He sure is. Well, where is he? What's left of that mud shack out there? I'm taking him in protective custody. Now, hold Wait. on, Marshal. He can't Wait. hold fast on my men. Don't go out there like that. Why not? This Baca's had so many dirty tricks played on him, he's liable to shoot any angle he sees. Well, what do you suggest I do? Send his friend out to talk to him. Are you willing? Sure. Uh, uh, What's he mean, protective custody? It means he aims to take that murdering skunk away from us. That's what it means. El Fago, it is me, Sangano. Yes, I saw you coming, compadre. I have brought Deputy Morgan from Socorro. You gracias, Sangano. He has promised that if you surrender to him, he will be responsible for your safety. I trust him. But I do not trust the others. Tell him I will come out if everyone goes away but you and him. He says he will come out if you'll all leave. Sure, sure, we'll leave, Deputy. Won't we, boys? Yeah! yeah. Let's bring him out. Wait a minute. All of you men get out of sight. As soon as he gives up his shooting irons, we'll take him away from that Deputy and hang him to the nearest cottonwood. Compadre, you can come out now. It is all clear. Hello, Alfago. 
Thanks for coming. We better get started. I guess maybe you better let me have those guns. I think maybe I'd better keep them till we get out of here. They're up to something. Be careful. Wait a minute. You know how Bacchus has been induced to surrender? I promised him a safe escort to Sakura to stand trial there. But there can't be any double dealing. You stay where you are. If Bacchus does anything wrong, he'll be punished for it. But he'll be tried by a jury, not by a lynch mob. All right, Mr. Deputy. We'll help you provide an escort to Socorro, but he's got to give up his guns. I'll go to Socorro on one condition and one condition only. That is that I keep my guns and sit in the rear seat of the buckboard. Mr. Morgan and Zangano will sit up front, and the rest of you will ride ahead of us. That's my condition. You can take it or leave it. All right. All right, we'll give him his escort. Come on. Senor Martinez, known as Sangano to his Mexican friends, admit that he left the area when the trouble began. And you've heard Deputy Morgan tell how he arrived at the scene on the evening of the second day after El Fago Baca had shot down five Americans. Objection, Your Honor. Objection sustained. The evidence showed that only four men were shot. The foreman was killed by his own horse falling upon him. I apologize, Your Honor. Four men shot down in cold blood and 13 others badly wounded. With the permission of the court, I should like to put the prisoner on the stand once more. It's out of order, but proceed. If you please. Remember, El Fago, you're on trial for your life. No, that'll not be necessary. You're already under oath. Now, if you'll just answer a few more questions. Go ahead. Is it true that you were once friendly with the notorious outlaw and killer known as Billy the Kid? Well, I once knew Billy Bonnie a long time ago, when we were muchachos. But he wasn't an outlaw then. He had never shot anybody. Did he teach you that lightning draw of his? No, senor. He taught me to play the piano. <laughs> <laughs> well, is it true that when you were 15, your father was arrested for murder? He was arrested, yes. But it was no way to treat my father. Why not? Didn't he kill two men? My father was town marshal of Belen. He shot them to preserve law and order. But he was tried by a court and sentenced to a long term in the penitentiary, was he not? Ay, que barbaridad. Speak English. I only said, what a barbarity. Some enemies made false charges against my father. But he never served the sentence. Why not? He was freed. Who freed him? I did. <laughs> <laughs> so, it is true. You broke into a room above the jail and sawed a hole in the floor so your father could escape. Yes, senor, that is true. Then you admit obstructing justice. No, senor. I admit helping him to get out of jail. I did not obstruct justice. I aided it. Everybody knew my father was innocent. Constable, please confine his questioning to the case at hand. I'm finished with him, Your Honor. Gentlemen of the jury, I shall not waste any more of your valuable time. You've heard all the evidence. You can form your own opinion as to the character of the accused. By his own admission, he arrested a man illegally, and in the resulting battle, five or four men were slain. The issue is clear. El Fega Baca is a murder, and I demand nothing less than the death penalty. Gentlemen of the jury, I'd just like to remind you of something. When the defendant took the badge of a peace officer and arrested a drunken cowboy, illegally or not, he did it to protect lives and property. And when a group of armed men tried to take his prisoner from him, he acted in self-defense and kept his prisoner in custody. 
Later, El Fiba Baca alone held off a lynch mob of 80 men for 33 hours, surviving over 4,000 bullets. The door of the hut, by actual count, had 367 bullet holes in it. He survived fire and dynamite. When Deputy Morgan arrived, he surrendered to him, trusting he would receive a fair trial. I do not ask for charity, gentlemen. I simply ask for your honest verdict. If you find him guilty of murder, you must convict. But if you feel, as I strongly feel, that he was justified in defending himself against an armed mob who would take his life, then you must turn him free. Thank you. The jury will please retire and consider a verdict. Gentlemen, have you reached an agreement? We have, Your Honor. We find the defendant not guilty. What a surprise. You remember me then? How could I ever forget? We were so happy to hear that you were acquitted. I was happy too. But you should not have come back here. There is still much bad feeling against you. Well, get over it. Forgive me for not inviting you in, but my aunt is away. Could we not talk out here? Yes, I think it will be all right. What is your name, little one? I'm Ah, that's a pretty name, like its owner. Do you still have the statue of the saint you are named for? Oh, yes. Our Santa Ana is famous now because of you. People believe she has true miraculous powers. I have good reason to believe it. Would you be willing to sell her to me? Oh, senor, there can be no price for an image like that. Father Cabrera on her feast day has given us permission to carry her through the street. Will you come? Of course. <gasps> now, I must tell you why I came today. Because of me, your home was destroyed, so I have decided to make enough to build you a new place to live. And here's your first payment. It is not necessary, senor. My relatives have taken us in. But surely your parents would rather have a place of their own. I have no parents. My mother was taken from us when the smallpox broke out. And last year, my father was killed. How did that happen? My father was given a few acres of land by Don Mariano Vargas instead of wages that he owed him. After my father had worked the land, a stranger came and told him he had to get off. Why? He said the Vargas family no longer had any legal rights, and he showed them a paper to prove it. My father could not read English, so he refused to give up the land without putting up a fight. Naturally. One day as he was walking home, he was shot in the back. There were no witnesses, so no one was ever arrested. And the stranger? He sold the land to a mining company and moved away. So we were left without anything. We did not even own the little hut. I'm sorry. Very sorry. Do you know what I have decided to do? No. I'm going to fight injustices like that. How? I've decided to study law. I was thinking about it when I was in jail, waiting for my trial. Most of our people don't understand American law. Many of them are like your father. They don't even understand English. People are afraid of what they do not understand. But if they could go to someone who knows both languages and learn that the law is for them, too, then they wouldn't be afraid any longer. Oh, we need someone like that very badly, senor. I know it will not be easy. It takes years to become a lawyer. But I will buy books, study nights. He'll take off. I have been looking everywhere for you, compadre. You must get out of town at once. Why? You remember the leader of the Gringos who wanted to kill you? He is called Guy Smith. Well, someone told him you were in town, and he says he's going to shoot you. Where is he now? In Milligan's saloon. Well, then I guess I'd better go see him. 
Well, Speckle, do not get into more trouble. Anita, one thing I have learned, you don't avoid trouble by running away from it, but by facing it. Hasta la vista. All right. One more round, I'm going to prove once and for all this El Fegabaca ain't got no charmed life. I don't know, Dice. There's something awful unnatural about a man that didn't even get nicked with all that shooting. You know as well as I do, the floor of that ship was a foot below the ground outside. We shot over it. Well, I'll bet if you was to walk right up to him and aim point blank at his heart, the bullet would bounce back. Oh, you ignorant mule heads. I'll show you. I'll show all you. He's coming inside. I'm, I'm gonna wait in the back room. I'll give him a surprise. Don't mess up my place, Dyes. If you want to shoot him, shoot him outside. Good afternoon, gentlemen. I understand somebody by the name of Smith wants to kill me. Well, if he isn't here, you can give him a message. Tell him I'll be in town all day. And I'd be happy to meet him anytime he wants, face to face. What happened? I thought you were going to shoot it out with you. I am. I am. Ain't you coming with me? Sure fight. I never was much of a shot from the saddle, but don't ever try that again. I've been acquitted once of murder, but remember, if there's one to be tried and one to be buried, I'm going to be the one that's tried. I know he hit him, but nothing happened. He's protected by something, saint or the devil. Elfico, are you all right? Just a little pain where my belt buckle hit me. Santo Nino de Tucho. I think you got nine lives like a cat. <laughs> I think so too, compadre. But I'm not going to get careless or some fool will outlive me. Come in. Cousin Arturo, how good to see you. Sit down. Am I disturbing you? Oh, no, I'm tired of studying anyway. Elementary law. Are you going to become a lawyer? <laughs> well, in time I hope to be. What's the matter, Arturo? You seem upset. I have good reason to be. Tonight, some miners came into my store. And they had a few drinks, and then they start shooting up the place. Well, it's Saturday night. The men work in the pits all week. They have to blow off a little steam, no? No. They took possession of my store. Please, help me go right over to Plata Vila and get it back for me. Why cannot you protect your own property? Because I am not like you. They will shoot me. You? Well, everybody knows you cannot be hurt. Arturo, I can get hurt just the same as you. I beg of you. Please, if you will not do it for me, do it for your blessed mother and mine. Remember, your name is Baca. So it's yours. But I guess the blood runs thinner. You know, Arturo, I don't think a man should own property unless he can protect it. Oh, what am I going to do? <laughs> Please, I cannot stand to see a man weep. I will go. Thank you. Well, aren't you coming with me? Forgive me, Alfredo. Uh, I do not feel well. I shall go back tomorrow, after you have taken care of things. Oh, my, it's nice and jolly like a worm in the pits. If you don't get killed in the cave, then the gas will blow you to bits. The gas will blow you to bits. Listen time, gentlemen. And who might you be? I'm Elfigo Vaca. I'm helping out my cousin. Elfigo Vaca? Compañeros, 
This is the man that held off all those cowboys over in Frisco. Are all those wild tales they tell about you true? Well, don't believe everything you hear. Mr. Barker, I like you. Allow me to stand you a drink. Well, it's a little late, gentlemen. I think it's time you all went home. One drink with us, and then we'll go. These all are good men. They're our friends. They like us, paisano. Well, why shouldn't they? We are very charming people. To your health, gentlemen. Salud. And yours, sir. Come on, let's turn in. Hey, you gave me too much? That's what they charge here. Four bits a shot. Everything is high, paisano. Even frijoles and cornmeal for our tortillas. And no credit. Why do you pay such prices? Because there's not another store within 15 miles, and we have no horses to go to Socorro. That doesn't seem right. My cousin is rich. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, amigo. You spread the word that tomorrow we will have a special bargain day. You tell all your wives to be here at 9 o'clock right after Mass. And now let's have another drink on the house. Muchas gracias, Don Arturo. God will repay you. Repay? For what? For your bountiful gift. Today everything is free. Free? Si. Good morning, cousin. You're just in time to help me divide the rest of these groceries. But you are ruining me. I hardly think so. Surely you've made enough profit to afford to be generous at least one day. Oh, how can you do this to me? I sent you over to protect my property and you're giving it all away. Well, I told you, cousin. I do not think one has the right to property unless he will stay to protect it. I'm pleased you didn't give away my money. <laughs> oh, no. Not as long as the foodstuff's held out. Now, is there anything else I can do for you, cousin? Oh, no. Just go away, please. Well, do you feel free to call on me any time? I'm happy to have been of service. He got in an argument with the hotel clerk and knifed him. Then when the sheriff went to arrest him, he shot him dead. No, oh, the sheriff was good to me when I was in jail. You swear me illegally, I'll get him for you. You'll never make it across the street. What? Uh, I'm forgetting you got nine lives, haven't you? All right, raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, El Fago Baca, swear to uphold and defend the laws of Socorro County. I do. All right, that makes it legal. Peace officer now, why don't you give up before you get yourself full of lead? <laughs> you think I'm stupid? Let hang me. That's right, but at least you get a fair trial first. I can't hear you. Come closer. 
Baca? You still there? Sure. You still there now, Baca? Sure, you know me. Bullets just bounce off. Now, Mr. Bartlett, why don't you surrender? We'll have to come in there after you. Come on in. <laughs> side of law and order. You proved that when you captured Lee Bartlett. How'd you like to wear a star of your own? I'd like it fine. I need a job while I'm studying law. Good. I just come from a meeting of the Citizens Committee and they suggested that I propose you run for sheriff. Sheriff? Me? Well, sure. We can't think of a better man for the job. You think I'd have a chance? I don't know, but there's one district you can count on. Where's that? Platteville, where you gave your cut <laughs> <laughs> You know that big basket is from the safety committee? <laughs> and this big wreath here, that's from my friends in Frisco. Yeah, <laughs> look at this. It's from the governor. <laughs> well, well Sheriff, it? I'm at your disposal. Would you like to acknowledge these telegrams? Oh, later, Mr. Rappert. First, I'd like to take a look at the jail. You know, I was a prisoner here once, and I want to see if the food is any better. <laughs> <laughs> now, you mind the store, Deputy? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Bucker. Hello, Mr. Carlson. Good to see you again outside instead of in. Yeah. <laughs> Dionisio, what are you doing here? I owe the patron $11, and I cannot pay. Since when do they put you in jail for that? Oh, it's a new law the sheepmen have pushed through, making it a defense to contract a debt and not pay. How long are you supposed to serve? 60 days, the judge say. But how can you pay if you're still locked up? It's what worry us, our wives and our kids. They will go hungry. This doesn't seem right. We'll have to look into this, huh? Are you El Pegabaca, the new sheriff? That's right. I'm Carter Wingate from the governor's office. Oh, I'm happy to know you. Please, sit down. Thank you. Well, how's the governor? Fine. How are things here? Oh, fine. We got word that you were having a little trouble down here. Trouble? No, we haven't any trouble. Well, there are rumors that... Well, they sent me down here to investigate. Are you sure that everything's all right at the jail? Sure. Everything is fine. Well, that's good. No uh, difficulties with the prisoners, then? No. No difficulties at all. I'm relieved, Parker. How many have you got in there now? None. None? Well, I... None? Well, what happened? I chased them out. But why? They ate too much. Now, just a minute, Bucky. I happen to know that less than a week ago, five sheep herders were sentenced to serve 60 days. I know, but don't worry. They will not be back. But why did you free them? I told you, they ate too much. The county cannot afford costs like that. Besides, now they are paying back their debts. You know, Mr. Wingate, that's a very bad law. It's not even constitutional. Uh, uh, excuse me, Sheriff, but uh, here are some warrants that you have to sign right away. You'll forgive me, please. Uh, uh, I have to be going anyway. Well, I, I'm, I'm very happy to have met you, Mr. Wingate. Oh, by the way, 
When you see the governor, speak to him about having that law repealed, will you? Here's a list of those dangerous men that you wanted. Should I deputize some of the safety committee? We'll go out and bring them in. Well, maybe we ought to give them a chance first, no? Mr. Rapper, I want you to take a letter. Uh, dear sir. Oh, no. Make it personal-like. I have here a warrant for your arrest. Please come in by the 15th of the month and give yourself up. If you do not, I will know that you intend to resist arrest. And I will feel justified in coming after you and shooting you on sight. Very truly yours, Ilfe Gobaka, Sheriff. And now, gentlemen, I'm going to take a little weekend trip. Hey, Mr. Morgan. Here. Yeah. I'll see you bright and early Monday morning. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I wonder what's in that note. Dear Mr. Baca, we are all proud of you. I hope to be seeing you soon to tell you in person. Anita Chavez. There is a senorita, so pretty and chiquita, dark eyes so bonita, and I must sing her name. Buenos dias. It is in Carmencita, Lolita, Lolita. Or even Margarita, you must guess again. Margarita, if you say Estelita, Conchita or Rosita, Sarita or Juanita, it's closer to my aim. Hi, Joe! For she is sweet Anita, Anita la bonita, and to the senorita, my love I will proclaim. <laughs> Back in the late 1800s, this 50 caliber rifle was commonly known as a buffalo gun. Not very accurate at great distances, but deadly at short range. In our next week's program, titled Four Down and Five Lives to Go, a gun such as this almost snuffed out the charmed life of El Fago Baca. The actual incident happened one early morning just outside Socorro, New Mexico. He's in trouble again. There's danger wherever he goes. Death stalks him at every turn. Next week, Walt Disney presents part two in the real life adventures of El Figo Baca, the man who couldn't be killed. If that stranger at the end of the table should ask you to dance with him, give him permission. Why, I've refused to dance with him already. He is most ill-mannered. Why should you want me to dance with him? Because I think he's carrying a revolver in a shoulder holster. And you can find out for me. incident is true, incredibly true. El Fago was mild-mannered with those who respected the law. He was relentless with those who broke it. International boundaries couldn't stop him once he set out to get his man. Who are you? El Fago Baca, Sheriff of Socorro County. I have a warrant for your arrest. You've got no right to arrest me. We're in Mexico. I know, but we won't be for long. Muevate. This is the colorful life of El Fago Baca, as he lived it in the lawless days of the West. You know there's a saying in Spanish, death is as certain as life is uncertain. But everybody says I have nine lives like a cat, and I want him to keep on thinking it. You'd better administer the last sacraments. No, Father, not for me, for him. Here is High Adventure, recreated for you in all its amazing reality, next week, when Walt Disney presents Four Down and Five Lives to Go. And the legend was that 
like Elgato the cat, nine lives had El Fago Baca. This has been an ABC Television Network film presentation.